we are here at this beautiful home of Ms. Gamchi Thamre R. Mara. She is a recipient of National Award for Teachers. This is Wilhelmnagar East Garo Hills, Meghalaya. Ms. Gamchi Thamre R. Mara is a head teacher of Edusia Higher Secondary School. She is an educator, a social entrepreneur, and right now the name in every household of Meghalaya. She is one of the 45 plus 2 special awardees selected Pan India, the only one from Meghalaya. The conditions of eligibility of teacher for the award are for the individuals who are school teachers and heads of schools working in recognized primary, middle, high and higher secondary schools. District Selection Committee is the first level scrutiny for this award. Then the second is the State Selection Committee. The third level of scrutiny is done by Organizational Selection Committee. And the fourth and final level of scrutiny is done by Independent Jury at National level. To get this award, there is an evaluation matrix which includes Category A and Category B. Category A is objective criteria, where work done by teacher to encourage community, parents, alumni, etc. Publications, research, enrolled courses under Swayam or others. Development of textbook, teacher handbooks for SCERTs, boards or NCERT. All of these comprises of 20 marks. Category B is criteria based on performance, innovative experiments undertaken by the teacher, organization of extra and co-curricular activities, mobilization of society and promotion of the nation. All of these gives away total of 80 marks. So the total of 20 marks in category A and 80 marks in category B makes up to 100 marks. Hello, I am Brenda D. Mara. I will be your guest host for today and interview a big personality for today's program. I was very excited because as an educator, I will be learning a lot from her today. She is a social entrepreneur. She is an educator. She is the head teacher of Edusher Higher Secondary School, Samanda Willem Nagar, East Garo Hills District, Meghalaya. She is a woman on top. She is a recipient of National Teachers Award 2022. Presenting to you, Madam Gamchi Tumre Armara. Hello, ma'am. Welcome to the program. Hello, Brenda. Uh, first of all, ma'am, a massive congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Uh, how was the experience in Delhi and what was your favorite moment? Delhi experience was just awesome. I felt on top of the world because this is what I have been striving for so long. And finally, um, I could achieve that. And the best moment was receiving the award from our Honorable President of India, Madam um, Draupadi Murmuji. Because she's a woman and also a tribal at that. So it gives me such a sense of joy and satisfaction uh, since I was also in the women panel and had been working for women for so long. You are very inspiring, ma'am. Uh, can you walk us through your journey on crafting your school? Uh, in the first place, I never wanted to be a teacher because I thought it's such a tedious job. But my parents always wanted me to be a teacher since they themselves were teachers. So my husband um, was a teacher in Pre uh, Malki Presbyterian School, and he really loved working for poor children. But uh, for security reasons, um, we applied for government job and finally he got a job. But he had two options, either to go to Maharam in Kasa Hills or to come to William Nagar in Garo Hills. I persuaded my husband that the need for our services was more in Garo Hills. That's how we landed in William Nagar. So <clears throat> the moment we landed, there were lots of offers for me as a, a 
headmistress and also a teacher. In the beginning, I declined because my son was very small. By the by, when he became a little bigger, when um, I was requested to help open Green Yard Higher Secondary School at that time, which was called Town Nursery School, I helped to open it and I worked as a teacher and a headmistress for five years. So at that time, uh, the place was so underdeveloped and there were lots of social problems. And I wanted to teach our children um, good quality education as well as values so that they can become resourceful, competent and also good human beings. So I wanted to open a school. I envisioned that I want to give quality, innovative uh, education and uh, make our children from this place who were all, uh, most of the time looked down upon um, to be at par with the rest of the world. So when the community requested me to open another school, I uh, took the opportunity and envisioned on opening a special school with special features. And therefore, my mission was to open a school to achieve my vision. So when um, Edusea School for Juniors was opened, so many uh, problem children came. Dur during those days, there were lots of uh, children from broken homes, children, especially at that time, lots of alcoholism, uh, domestic violence, and um, the whole fabric of society was at a breaking point. So um, when parents came with so many requests, I took in lots of problem children. They were into substance abuses and uh, so many other social evils. And so um, I took them in, I tried to give them value education, I motivated them, and slowly children, they passed out from my school. And parents were so grateful. In fact, some parents, they came and even touched my feet because they were so grateful. So uh, by the by, the school um, uh, transformed into a need-based um, school where we take in... Um, regular children uh, who are looking for innovative and uh, quality education and secondly children who are dropouts failures uh, repeaters and also children with special needs and the third category is children uh, of uh, single parents or deserted children marginalized children who is sponsor so these are the three categories so uh, finally <clears throat> Since I was into motivating the children and trying to make something out of their lives, one day I came upon a book which is called I Am Gifted and So Are You by Adam Koo, who is an NLP practitioner. Mm -hmm. So NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming is about psychotherapy. That is um, <clears throat> modeling a successful personality and um, using their strategies mm -hmm. to become successful. So even though I'm not a licensed practitioner, I started adopting the strategies. So NLP, then whole brain learning, and um, accelerated uh, learning strategies. Those I try to um, give to my children. And therefore, uh, to uh, attain whole brain learning, I incorporated music and taekwondo. Uh, because whole brain, uh, if I may say so, uh, we have two hemispheres in the brain, a right brain and left brain. And um, a right brain, it deals mostly with our everyday academic subjects, whereas the, uh, the, uh, the right brain, it deals with holism, creativity, um, rhythm, etc. So, um, so I try to incorporate both the brains, the use of the both brains, so that children uh, can come out of this. And this NLP, uh, NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, it helps the children to become positive. See, like our society is so responsible for our negative attitude. Right from small, we always talk negativity to our children. For one instance, if a child fails, we always label them as a failure. We always say that they are bad in mathematics mm -hmm. or in language or whatever. So um, children are uh, in NLP, they come out from that belief 
negative belief mm -hmm. and turn into positive belief. And so like they become confident of themselves. And then using the strategies of successful um, models or uh, students and uh, children also, um, they learn to take care of themselves. So they become positive and then um, there are nine steps uh, learning uh, thing for successful uh, studies. So one thing is like um, they have to set clear goals. If they want to study, uh, if they want to get 100%, they have to study uh, hours to achieve that. It is not just saying I will get 100% and studying uh, one hour or mm -hmm. two hours, but they have to set goal. They have to set goal and they have to really work at it. Therefore, setting goal is first thing. Second is uh, time planning or scheduling. And third is consistency. This is where we are lacking. Consistency. They have to constantly, that means they have to practice a lot. Every day they have to practice. And then they have to study. And then they have to, uh, this um, learning strategies, that is like uh, accelerated learning strategies, it is called like um, uh, speed reading or memory power mm -hmm. and all those things they have to do. So in this way, if uh, it is up to them, if they're motivated enough, they do that. And then when both the brains are used, and especially one of the um, learning uh, strategy is using this mind mapping concept mapping. So like uh, when you're studying um, subjects like uh, uh, left brain subjects like logic or mathematics, linearity, mm -hmm. all those things, but you use uh, uh, left, right, right brain, brain strategies like mind mapping, that is drawing, colors, mm -hmm. all these things, it, uh, it helps them to remember. Mm -hmm. So in this way, they achieve a lot. Mm -hmm. they, they, uh, they, um, they perform better. And uh, like speed reading, it helps them to cover mm -hmm. the textbook. And then um, uh, uh, then memory power, uh, memory power, and, um, and then application. So all these things they are taught. And if they um, follow it, then mm -hmm. definitely they become uh, successful. Uh, Ma'am, many uh, people would discount your constant hard work, your constant grind, and think that you're very lucky. But uh, do you think you're lucky in this field? So there is no luck as such that I believe in except hard work. So if I may tell you, this is not the first time I have tried. See, like I got district award, then I was sent for, uh, then I got state award. Then after state award, normally we, was, we are sent for a national award. But uh, in the first two years, um, there were so many criteria when they were selecting. So either maybe the age factor, service factor, uh, whatever. So maybe um, there are many others which I don't know. So um, previously, once a person is selected for nationals, say from the, by the state committee, that is for secondary, upper primary and LP, all three will get uh, the national award. So this is the criteria? Yes, yeah, no, uh, not, uh, not the criteria. Okay. At that time, it was mm -hmm. like, uh, All right. like whoever is selected, they will mm -hmm. get it. But in my time, suddenly it stopped. There were lots of new, new criteria. Mm -hmm. So before only the um, state committee comprising of uh, maybe principal secretary or uh, director, um, all those mm -hmm. uh, um, um, professionals in education, they were the committee members. Then uh, in my times, uh, it was required that union uh, member from the, um, from central, central government, from NCRT, uh, was supposed to be uh, in the panel. And uh, for two years, it was like that. So anyway, I'm, I was still waiting for my turn because everyone naturally would get a turn in the end. But, uh, and in the second year, uh, my friend, my other friends were selected. Mm -hmm. But uh, the following year I had, to, I was uh, selected by the governor to attend the uh, in-residence program for award-winning teachers at Rastapati Bhavan. So during those times we had to visit NCRT, CBS board, um, uh, Kendra Vidyalaya mm -hmm. Sangathan, 
So all these bodies, we had been uh, discussing with them. So I met my interviewer mm -hmm. and she told me, next year you are going to get definitely. But again, things changed. New scheme mm -hmm. came. In the new scheme, out of 156 uh, or 57 uh, state candidates, it was rationalized that only 45 plus 2 mm -hmm. uh, will be selected. And so um, this new scheme, um, it gave more impetus to the, um, the award since we have to compete. And therefore, in this new scheme, uh, in the district, uh, first and foremost, we have to apply online. Uh, after we um, applied online, then again, we were uh, filtered by them. Mm -hmm. We were filtered, we were verified by mm -hmm. the district. And That's then we, are, we were sent to the uh, state. <coughs> and in the state also, there is a committee uh, where again, they re-verified mm -hmm. and then they um, interviewed us. In the new uh, selection board, uh, finally we have to make a presentation a presentation in front of uh, the independent uh, jury uh, in the national level. And so uh, only those who fulfill the criteria, uh, fulfill the criteria means it's a big competition. Mm -hmm. Out of 156, only 45 plus 2 uh, are selected, mm -hmm. 47 are uh, selected. And so uh, there is no state quota, there is no uh, union territory quota. We have to fight it out with the rest of the country. And therefore, like uh, being selected, it, it is not a matter of joke, it is not easy, it is really, really tough. And therefore, um, getting the selection, uh, it's a big achievement for me. Yes, ma'am, definitely a big achievement for you and a big achievement for Garo Hills and women, women in general. So I think you are a big, uh, big, uh, big influential person. Now, ma'am, on the uh, 5th of September 2022, our Prime Minister has gifted our children, the children of the nation, the scheme of uh, PM Shri, School for Rising India. Uh, what do you think? that uh, this scheme, the component of national education policy, uh, would bring change? In the new education policy, there is uh, one element uh, which says that um, according to geographical locations, uh, the schools will be clubbed into a cluster. That means um, higher secondary will be secondary that time, secondary, then the middle, then foundational and preparatory. All these will be clubbed together mm -hmm. right from Balbatika or from the Anganwadi uh, level. Mm -hmm. So um, now the big question is we have to share. We have to share our infrastructure. We have to share our teachers, resources. So like uh, everybody's fighting their own battles. Every right from LP or UP, private, Everybody is fighting their own battles because infrastructure is not enough, mm -hmm. resources are not enough, funds are not enough. Mm -hmm. So to share also will be a big burden. So now this um, PM Shri, that is uh, Prime Minister's School uh, for mm -hmm. Rising India. So this is a very good initiative mm -hmm. because uh, one school will be a model school to implement NEP. Mm -hmm. uh, so. In NEP, there are lots of um, um, uh, features, mm -hmm. say like uh, it will be on incorporated with so many things, like how I'm doing just now, like uh, incorporating Taekwondo mm -hmm. or music, mm -hmm. all these things. So in, in, um, um, in new education policy, uh, there are so many things, all will be incorporated. Uh, so these infrastructures are very, very much needed. And therefore, uh, that model school uh, will have to handhold, will have to mentor other schools. Mm -hmm. So some schools may not have enough teachers, and especially language is going to play a big part. Mm -hmm. uh, like every child will be learning in their own language vernacular. Mm -hmm. So um, if there are so many children with different languages, mm -hmm. we will not be able to recruit mm -hmm. as many teachers. So um, when we have this cluster, then we can share our teachers. They may be of different languages or 
um, communities. So in this way, we can help each other. And therefore, this concept is really very good. Mm -hmm. So um, we were uh, quite apprehensive, like who will be uh, paying the bills? So uh, in fact, uh, when we were discussing in our um, in our group as uh, uh, in the focus group, for the frame framing of state curriculum, mm -hmm. I was also in the group uh, in the um, school governance and leadership group, mm -hmm. and we had discussed about this. And uh, at that time, we were wondering how who will foot the bill, and how are we going to mm -hmm. share with so many schools? There will be uh, it will be burden on the school which mm -hmm. is having the infrastructure. <laughs> but now uh, this is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, a model school will be finance, it will be the infrastructure mm -hmm. and resources all will be mm -hmm. uh, available, made available so that we can share and therefore it will help all the schools because uh, each school has their own um, problems and difficulties and the loopholes. So, mm, you know, in LP school right now, uh, some are single teachers mm -hmm. and they are manning five classes, which doesn't do justice mm -hmm. at all to the children, children's learning. And um, and there are so many different uh, categories mm -hmm. of teachers, like contractual teachers, mm -hmm. board teacher, whatever, all those things. So in this way, schools, they face the brunt of all these problems. And therefore, when we have a cluster group, mm -hmm. at least uh, we can handhold, we can mentor, uh, we can fill the gaps here and there. And mm -hmm. uh, every child will get the opportunity Say if they don't have sports, mm -hmm. uh, sports equipments or stadiums, mm -hmm. uh, they can share. They can come and get mm -hmm. the benefit of uh, the schools, the model schools. So in this way, I feel this is a very good gesture, and uh, I think in implementing an EP, if one is a model, then others can see, observe, and follow, and they'll be also uh, brought into the mainstream. All right. Yes. Therefore, I feel it is a very good initiative. It is. It is uh, because uh, they have a they have a holistic approach right yes. now, and I think it might do justice to the children as well. Um, Ma'am, uh, career development of the teachers mm -hmm. uh, has really seen the light of the day, mm -hmm. especially in mm -hmm. part of Garo Hills. Mm -hmm. You have set a huge benchmark mm -hmm. and shown the light to mm -hmm. the teachers. Mm -hmm. What would your advice mm -hmm. would be to the teachers mm -hmm. in Garo Hills? When I came to William Naga and started the school, Green Yard School, I was not professionally trained. And so I felt a need that I should go for professional training. And therefore, when I uh, started my school, I went for be a training. And then every training that was given to me, I took it. Mm -hmm. I underwent. I never said no to any training at all. So in service, tra uh, in service training, uh, orientations, everything I underwent. And every time I get new ideas, new concepts, new approaches, mm -hmm. new ideologies, um, methodologies, in fact. So that is why it is very important for every teacher to be trained. It gives them new insight. It gives them uh, the problem-solving skills. So they learn from the best practices mm -hmm. of others. So in this way, if anyone wants to become a teacher, they must understand that they are uh, playing with the lives of children. So it should not be a stopgap arrangement or it should not be um, just for the sake of it. Once you become a teacher, you really have to understand the role of a teacher mm -hmm. um, um, and the responsibility it entails. And therefore, um, we have to plan to be a teacher. We must understand the um, the importance of being a teacher. And therefore, no one should not just be a teacher just for the sake of it. They must plan. They must go for pre-service mm -hmm. training, equip themselves, mm -hmm. then enter the profession of teaching. Mm -hmm. Then in-service mm -hmm. teaching, in-service training, mm -hmm. any in-service training, they must attend. Because I, as a principal, the uh, first thing I attended was um, uh, National Principals Meet. So that was held in um, Don Bosco Institute, Karguli, Assam. Mm -hmm. And on my own, I attended that. And uh, the faculty from Liverpool University came. And therefore, I learned a lot. And I could see like what I didn't know before, uh, 
like I started, mm-hmm. I, I saw, I learned and like it, uh, it enriched me. And after that, um, every time there was um, leadership training like for principals and from RMSA, I attend that from, um, you know, from other departments, education departments. I attended in DRT, in Diesel, in uh, Don Bosco Institute. So in this way, all the heads come, all the te- and especially the heads come. And so we learn a lot from others' uh, best practices. And we were given new approaches, new methodologies by our trainers. And therefore, it really enriches. And here I want to say, uh, when I attended um, RMSA, uh, training for principals out of 40 quarters out of 40 teachers mm-hmm. only 20 teachers from girls attended just imagine this is Very why I would like to stress today we must uh, equip ourselves with all these trainings and we must never refuse and see uh, government also is doing so <coughs> much they're spending yes, so much money to train one teacher mm-hmm. and so many teachers did, were absent this is really what to say. Um, I really cringe at the thought of it. So government also, they are trying their best to uh, make us to be better mm, teachers. Why do you think that this happens? Is it because there are no standards in the profession, uh, teaching profession? Or for that matter, uh, academic performance records are not taken care of? Why do you think this happens? Um, why do you think that teachers do not go for professional growth or attend workshops or build themselves? Mm, In my finding, I find uh, schools are not uh, inspected as regularly as it should have. Mm -hmm. So schools get away with whatever they are doing and teachers also and especially our people, we are quite like uh, we have a very relaxed Mm -hmm. mindset. There is no urgency. Mm -hmm to improve themselves. And uh, and so we can say, once you get a job, they have no more goals to achieve. So we must always think that there is always uh, higher things to mm-hmm. achieve. Uh, it's not just getting a job mm-hmm. and getting good pay package, but we must keep on learning because education doesn't stop. Yes. See, right? Uh, they say education is. Uh, it begins from the tomb mm-hmm. to the. I mean, to from the womb mm-hmm. to, to the tomb. tomb. So uh, unless and until uh, we die, mm-hmm. education never stops. And therefore, and especially now, you know, uh, the this knowledge, information, knowledge, it is growing exponentially. Every minute, new things are happening, yes. and we are still. Uh, lagging behind. We are not keeping abreast. Mm-hmm. See, the, there are so many things like, okay, um, uh, you may not be able to go for trainings because a mm-hmm. uh, uh, very selective few mm-hmm. can get, go. But we can update ourselves uh, with webinars mm-hmm. or online mm-hmm. trainings and get certifications also. So it depends on you. If you want to grow, you can keep on growing. There is no limit to that. Mm-hmm. And once you're equipped, and once you know the rudiments and once you know um, uh, the principles, the workings, then you can apply it. Like by your observation, uh, what you're called for, you can break your own paths. That's how like not everybody's uh, teaching learning process will be the same. According to the need, according to the requirements, you uh, find, the, find your own path. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you create your own innovations and then um, in the process then you you will be recognized Mm -hmm. so this is where we are lagging behind we are so complacent once we get a job and that is all but we have to keep on growing we have to keep on searching we have to keep on updating and in future what kind of what kind of uh, uh, um, scenario it will be. Right now, children are very, very smart. Mm-hmm. Right from babyhood, they're uh, touching the computer, playing with computers, and very, very smart. Mm-hmm. And w- as a teacher of another generation, mm-hmm. uh, what kind of uh, uh, education are we giving mm-hmm. to them? And they're not satisfied. And therefore, we should be ahead of the children. Exactly. If we're going to the 21st century, we have to be equipped for 21st century education. Ma'am, uh, and as we were discussing earlier, uh, the 
profession of teacher in the society, in the family, in, uh, in the eyes of everybody is just taken very lightly. So, you know, what, what can we do something to change about that notion that, you know, most of us are conditioned just thinking that teacher is just a teacher or an option as a job. Mm. Yes, uh, the status of teacher is very, very low in our, uh, in our, um, maybe in the country. Mm -hmm. So if you look at other countries, number one profession is te teaching. And um, their pay packet, their status, everything is very, very high. And therefore, if we also, we, uh, we make um, prof uh, teaching profes profession, uh, very high standard, competitive, uh, just like how we say for IAS, mm -hmm. for uh, civil services, mm -hmm. like how people, they really um, struggle and mm -hmm. try their best. So if our this teaching profession, actually this is the most important profession, we are playing with the lives of children, we are playing with their future. And therefore, if uh, our uh, status of teachers and um, um, the even the um, pay packet uh, and all the perks, mm -hmm. all those things. If uh, we are also put in that category, then definitely people, uh, mm -hmm. they will want to be in teaching profession. True. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, ma'am, uh, we have had a very good discussion today and um, we would like you to give a short message to the teachers and to the audience. Mm. Um, as of now, as we discussed just now, uh, teachers, they always feel that they're, um, they're not in a very high position. We always feel that uh, engineers or IAS or any other profession is uh, much, much uh, higher than us. And we feel that teaching is just uh, something to... Uh, tie us something um, as a stopgap arrangement and all that. So um, teachers must feel proud of themselves. Uh, we are the creators of all the other professions. And um, they say um, uh, we are impacting eternity. And therefore, um, all the teachers, they should be proud of themselves. They should continue in their professional growth. And as I said earlier, they must break new paths. They must be innovative. Uh, and then um, they should also write books. They should also write books so that uh, maybe their journals or their books, um, it, can, uh, it can be used in NCRT or it can be used in our boards. And uh, likewise, it will enrich others. So writing is one of the criteria for national um, uh, award for teachers and um, innovative teaching, um, which carries 30 marks in uh, application itself. And, um, and there's so many other things like uh, cutting down on drop, uh, dropout rates and uh, enrollment, uh, increasing the enrollment and also mobilizing the community. And there's so many others um, which a teacher has to do. That's why we have to keep on growing. We have, to, uh, uh, we have to try out new things. We have to think out of the box. And then um, and every time we have to document what we are doing. We must document what we are doing because in uh, while applying also, there is always like uh, after, uh, after the remarks, whatever you have felt, uh, there is a field for video and also for um, photograph. So documents are required and video proofs are required and therefore do good work, but also document and uh, uh, be proud of what you're doing and also a competition, we must um, compete because after having done everything, if we just wait for the honor to be given to you on a platter, it's not going to happen. So we have to compete. And when we compete with the whole of India and, we, and when we come out shining, that is the greatest achievement. We are at par with the rest of the country and uh, we are not lagging behind. So I, my message today is, Every teacher, be proud of yourself, be proud of your work, 
um, break new paths, and then um, show your worth. Show your worth. Compete and achieve, and nothing is impossible. Because she is a teacher, she dreams big. Because she is a teacher, she works hard. And because she is a teacher, she never gives up. Thank you once again, ma'am, for being here with us. Thank you for sharing and enlightening us with all your beautiful experiences and your unique vision for education. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me.